Shalom, shalom. Welcome back to the channel. Folks, I want to take you back. Um, two and a half years <laughs> to October of 2014 and an event where there was a comet having an interaction with Mars. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because uh, the codes are vindicated today. And I called some flack out of this particular event and this table that I looked at for many, many, many months preceding this event. Um, and even out of the, all of the data that we pulled out of that table and all the information, there were still things there that we didn't find until after, um, in hindsight. I was calling a deep impact on this. The words deep impact were not there. However, the word collides in the way that word was was there uh, led me to believe that it would collide. Um, but I was calling it deep impact. And you, we're going to go back and I'm going to show you the actual broadcast and tie chat um, broadcast we did. I was really disappointed um, because it was a deep impact. But, however, um, the information that's come out today seems to vindicate the codes because the codes were right the whole time folks collision happened collides were there code searcher said deep impact pie on the face code searcher that's why i've said the margin of error in the codes is always with man and here is the evidence of that um the codes were right the whole time all right, so new research reveals the electromagnetic effects of Mars 2014 near-miss encounter with comet C-2013A1 or Siding Spring. The data collected by MAVEN probes uh, magnetometer suggests a flyby momentarily through the Martian magnetosphere into chaos. We think the encounter blew away part of Mars' upper atmosphere, much like a strong solar storm would. Jared S. Lee a MAVEN science team member at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center said in a news release, unlike Earth, which boasts a magnetic field generated from within, Mars magnetic field was created by the interaction between its plasma-rich upper atmosphere and solar winds. It is considerably weaker than the Earth's magnetic field. Most comets boast a magnetic field similar to Mars, generated by the interaction between the charged plasma particles in the coma and the solar winds. In 2014, when Comet Sighting Spring passed within 87,000 miles of Mars, its coma nearly touched the Martian surface. The comet magnetic field merged and overwhelmed Mars' much weakest, weaker magnetosphere. The main action took place during the comet's close approach, but the planet's magnetosphere began to feel some effects as soon as it entered the outer edge of its, the comet's coma. The first effects were minor ripples and waves pulsing across the Martian magnetosphere. Uh, as the comet's coma penetrated the atmosphere, however, Mars' magnetic field was plunged into chaos. This is really uh, important information, folks. So. There's more than one reason why I'm bringing this up, not just to vindicate the codes or who is vindicating the codes, but I got a feeling it's going to happen on the Earth uh, with Nibiru or Planet 7X plasma discharge. Um, this event actually uh, contributed to proving or helped proving the theory of the electric universe. Folks, you remember Tesla? Uh, Researchers hope studying the actions between the two magnetic fields will aid in the understanding of how solar winds and solar storms interact with the magnetospheres of Mars and Earth. Uh, and for good reason. Because when there is a plasma discharge, it's very, it's, it, it, just the whole atmosphere it lit up, siding spring lit um, the Mars atmosphere up like a light bulb. When, when that bolt hit, it just, it, let me just play you just a little bit of this video from the Cosmos News um, 
they did it, they'd covered it and let me turn down the volume on that uh, but here you go you see it um, as it rolls through it's gonna play back again posted to you on October 19th shows the atmosphere of Mars exploding as the comet sighting spring passes with huge flash 7,000 miles of the red huge planet. flash undeniable despite um, these reports there was indicating all NASA orbiters and ground now what happens with a plasma discharge and this chart here is uh, from Gil Broussard my brother uh, this is in Northwest Africa right here and, uh, this is a suspected um, plasma discharge site on Earth. And the time that this happened, it was probably not civilization, um, because if there had been, and if there yeah, it was at the time, it was very, I mean, this did, this shook the whole world. This did a lot of, um, freaky things to the planet. As you can see what happened to Mars here, it lit up and, uh, you know, there, it is said that when these things happen, that it could drag across the surface. And there is imagery in Mars, even with a plasma discharge site like this, of, of huge canyons the size of the Grand Canyon here in, in America. Um, that's the power we're talking about here. Now, why does it got anything to do with us? Well, folks, first, this table has been proven today to be absolutely incredibly accurate i mean we're batting a thousand again just like that um here's the access term here's the word collides in yellow and crossing the term a massive amount of data we found and we pulled out of here as you can see so i'm going to show you the scaled down version so we can look without all the um Verses and things like that. Here's here it is. So we got the actual name of the comet, vertical in the codes, with the word comet sitting right on top of the name of the comet. Uh, we've got a coma in here because the coma they did collide, as the code says here. Um, coma and collides. Uh, blood moon is in there. Which is another sign. This is clearly a sign, folks, because what I should have stressed in this is the is the astronomical or the the, the sign that you hold showing us in, in heaven. Okay, he controls these. He tells us in Genesis. He gives us these for signs and, and for seasons to communicate. And what was he telling us here? You got a comet, which is a harbinger of, destru of destruction. You got Mars, which is the symbol in Roman mythology of the god of war coming together, collision. The word war is here three times. Three times. The, the sign here with World War III is coming. This is two and a half years ago, folks. Have you been following what's going on in the world? We are at the brink of World War III. And I've been telling you, showing you in these, with these codes, with the passion that I have because of the encounters I've had with you, Hul, because I believe in what I'm, I'm seeing and what I'm doing here, that something terrible is coming. A war is coming. There's a captivity of this land coming. I showed you in some tables there's this fall of America. Babylon falls. The collapse. You see it happening now. We can't trust this government. The executive orders that the administration has put through as far as martial law is concerned. The underground bunkers, the FEMA camps. This video wasn't about gloating, folks. This was about you were vindicating. I was somewhat em embarrassed that there was a deep impact. I was a little disappointed that you didn't do something spectacular, but he did. It just wasn't what I 
wanted to see or was interpreting. And so there's a huge amount of lessons here. I'm a different code searcher this year, folks, two and a half years later. Uh, as you can see in the video, I was much younger than I am, than I appear to be now. Uh, so let me just play a clip of this. And you can see this is where we uh, go from this point right here. We just come on. We had been listening. And you can see when you if you watch this video, you can see here where I'm starting it. We had watched already 40 minutes. Uh, and there's another video before this one of of um, actual um, you know watching what was happening I got somebody jacking with my computer folks somebody is still trying to hack me this is the third time I've tried to put this video out because Satan doesn't want this out there's a big reason for that I need to turn the sound back up so you hear what happens. It's really interesting because so a lot of you remember this night you were there. So Let's just listen for a moment. To do is wait for the data from Mars and see what comes of that. Here is Chris coming and trying to console me. And, and look at what he's got on there. He's got a plasma discharge on his... Uh, <laughs> I didn't even realize that. On his um, avatar there. Now this is this is October 19, 2014, folks. So it's really weird going back and looking. Because you can see how young I look in this uh, after this happened. Um, but it was known there was a plasma discharge. We saw it. It was in the codes. Deep impact didn't happen, but a collision absolutely did. So, again, the codes are batting a thousand again. I was really disappointed. Isn't it interesting to watch this now? And another thing that's really interesting, I'll tell you, I'll show you that in a minute. It's really kind of sweet. But my future wife was in this room, and I had no idea at the time. I didn't even know who she was. It really. But I noticed that today when I was reviewing all this footage and I saw her name come up in the chat. She was actually there. What I was expecting was a deep impact and, uh, you know, I may be guilty of being over exuberant and a little too enthusiastic about that. Um, Collide. See, we were touring, uh, toiling over. I was like, my shit. Shalom, shalom. Um, I have to keep starting this over because someone's jacking with my system, folks. As I'm broadcasting here, someone's pausing, uh, messing with my with my equipment. Um, so yeah, let's continue on with this. The thing to remember here is there's more to this than just a collision. This is actually a sign that's taking place. It's a, you know, a comet and, you know, the Mars. And then another comet, the interaction that they have actually has. And it did have meaning behind it. It was well, like I just told you. And I think it's really interesting um, that as I'm trying to get this information out to you, it's a demonstration. And they're dis determined to sabotage me. That means the information is, is heavy. And I kid you not, as I'm sitting here, my, you know, things happen. When I was in Dallas, I could see on my computer being hacked and my cursor moving, files going bye-bye off my computer. I'm sitting here trying to record this video and I'm seeing my equipment being paused, the sound being turned down. You remember in Dallas, my drivers were being 
removed from my computer. So I'd go to try to record something and I have no sound because there was no sound driver. It's because of the information, folks. I had somebody slander me, throw me under the bus, make me look like a wicked person to my subscribers because of the information. The establishment is desperate. To stop the truth. Um, and I'm going to keep going. So this video is not about vindicating code searcher. This is vindicating the codes. Because there was some mocking. Even my ex-wife mocked me after this. But here we are two and a half years later. Now, why is that important? Why is all this important? Well, uh, it, it actually changed me, folks. Uh, I didn't look at codes the same after this. I was very conservative in what I was seeing and how I interpreted it. Now, now Nibiru was in this table, too. We talked about it when it all happened. Go back and watch the Siding Spring stuff. It's important because... The, the, Nibiru and Planet 7X, two and a half years later, we're talking about it. It was in this table. We talked about it then. The Orthodox Jews are freaking out in Israel about it. Folks, there is science here. This is not just some sort of, you know, hoax. Yes, there's a lot of pictures coming out on YouTube that are just lens flares and things like that. But NASA and all the scientists and astronomers that have seen it and talked about it in the 60s, 70s, it's there. It's doing things to this earth. Now, one of the verses that really didn't, and the reason why I was so sure there was something going to occur to this, and I, and I was convicted about it because... Um, well, the implications of some of these verses, the ones I have highlighted here. I mean, Isaiah 24 is here. The earth turns upside down the, in tartars to and fro like a drunkard. Um, go and read that chapter, folks. Isaiah 24. That was here. Um, the next, the next verse, sitting right on top of that, uh, or right under that, excuse me, is Isaiah 33, uh, around Third verse. Go read all that. This table was accurate the whole time. And we are only seeing that two and a half years later in hindsight. Nibiru is here. This planet 7X, Wormwood. We are going to see destruction and chaos on this planet. I'm confident of that. After what I'm seeing today, and many of you emailed me and messaged me, you know, so when you saw the information come out, Dabu did a video on this, this very thing, the collision of the atmospheres. Um, and I appreciate you guys, you know, remembering uh, what had happened in this. Because <laughs> I, was, I was kind of, you know, it took the wind, like I said, it took the wind out of my sails. And uh, I didn't look at codes the same. And the, the conservative code searcher emerged. Then I became under extreme attack in Dallas, uh, like I just said. Um, so there was many lessons learned. And you can go back and look at the videos, um, the things we know now. Um, so I'm taking that, that lesson, those lessons, all this information, and applying it to what we're looking for now. Uh, because there's a lot on my table right now, folks, that I'm looking at. You can see several tables here. Um, Planet 7X is in the forefront. Um, I'm not really following what's going in the election. Um, if there is an election, uh, Trump is the forerunner in that, and he's in grave danger, in high probability, someone's going to try to stop him. Um, so there's a lot going on. I uh, just wanted to do a little video and point 
point out a little vindication of the goats. Uh, I think it's awesome that the father did, you know, done that two and a half years later. After all I toil over and worried about in, in harming someone, when I say deep impact, the codes say collision. Yahuwah means collision. That's the lesson here. You don't read into what you want to see. And I wanted to see a collision. I'm, you know, I thought it would be in a huge impact to the, you know, not just literally, but to the world that you who was serious about judgment. Um, but he didn't need for me to put him in a box. He taught me a lesson, and today he uh, you know, brought it all back around. Here it is again, just coming back around uh, two and a half years later. So I uh, appreciate you guys messaging. Um, let me know that you saw this. And... Uh, Anyway, where did my... There it goes. Let me know um, that, you, that you're still with me. And, uh, you know, the, these codes are... They got me in some trouble with, with people. I've, I've been mocked. I've been abandoned by family. Uh, but today, it seemed the father smiled. And it was kind of weird to go back and look at some of this stuff in, in hindsight. I got to tell you. Um, but interesting, interesting lessons learned here. Uh, so a lot we're looking at and, uh, we'll be talking about more. Uh, folks will be broadcasting tomorrow, um, eight mountain and we will be reading again. Planet seven X. We're going to be back in this book because I do believe it's a sign folks. That's why we're doing it. I do believe it's a sign. There's going to be a star that appears, a star system appear in this solar system. That is going to sh just, and I believe it's the dragon. It is the dragon that is mentioned in Re Revelation 12. I'm confident in that. Um, the father told me when I was 12 that I would live to see the, the, the times of Wormwood. And here we are, years and years later. So, Shalom. Uh, you have a good weekend. And for those that are supporting the ministry, I thank you. We love you. We are praying for you guys. Um, those of you that send in your prayer requests or your concerns, uh, we're praying for you. Uh, we love you guys. We thank you for supporting and praying for us and uh, interceding. Um, it means a lot, especially when I have low days like that day, which was October 19th. 2014, uh, well, go back and watch the video. I wasn't, a, I wasn't a happy camper there, but I am today. So praise Yahuwah, um, for these things that he gives us. Shalom.